YouTube Oz, it go in the goat house is back. It's Detroit Lions Day. We'll have a day for every single NFL team. We have a few already up on the channel. There's a playlist full of them, but we'll get to all the teams. Make sure you comment on this video with which team you want me to do next because the team with the most comments will be the next video. Detroit Lions, we're talking about what to expect, what, what to watch for, maybe some questions for them this season, players to watch, games to watch, and we'll have some fans takes through our Twitter link pin in the comments for that. Detroit Lions, I have a top three for all these. Number three, big thing that you should watch for. Uh, watch for a more complete defense with their new additions, especially, mainly what we're talking about is the secondary, their additions in the secondary, because and I almost put uh, another way to title this, headline this, is watch for their secondary to make that jump that the run defense did. Watch for the pass defense to make the jump, possibly make the jump that the run defense did last year. Because remember, two years ago, run defense wasn't so hot. After last year, second in run defense. Second to last in pass defense. So that's pretty big difference there. And that was if the Lions, you know, Lions didn't have many flaws. Very good team, with, obviously went to the NFC Championship game, almost had that. But they're, they're, they're really their flaw was their pass defense was ex not really their front, not because their front, they, they, of course they can get better there, but not because the pass rush is what I'm trying to say. It's because their coverage skills could have been a little bit more consistent, a little bit better, just better as a unit. Cause you have some good pieces here and there. Uh, you know, Brian Branch was one as a rookie at Kirby. Joseph is a big time playmaker in the back end, but you add more, they add in free agency. They a trade for Carlton Davis as well. And they draft two studs, uh, including my number one corner in the draft, Terry and Arnold. I thought maybe it was the big, it was the biggest deal of the first round. Another line steal in the draft. So this creates more of a complete defense. A little bit of a question, though. Does the secondary make that leap? Do they? Because they're they're relying on some young guys. And the Lions, they develop the young guys pretty quickly. So maybe we're kind of getting a little too comfortable. Like, for sure, they're going to you know be great. I, I have high hopes for that, the, those deck group. I mean, Arnold's great. I love Tim. And Rake Shraw actually isn't far behind if healthy. Just has to stay healthy. That's why he was not a first-round pick. Um, you know, so yeah, let's, let's watch out for this. A more complete defense. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because that, that was like it. Like they look at it even, even at offense, like quarterback play was there running game. Yeah. Offense line. Yeah. Receivers. There's a little bit of a question when it comes to receivers, I suppose. Um, you know, I'm on for St. Brown's great, but could, could they add a little bit more to somebody step up? We'll talk about more about, we'll talk more about that in this episode here. Uh, then defense, they have young, improving players across the line. You know, they added DJ reader, uh, decent linebackers. Maybe some will step up, um, you know, and they have pieces in the secondary, but they completed it. So I love that's huge for them. Uh, and I do think. I, kind of going back to the run defense, I almost put that up here. Like, watch for an elite run defense. No one really talks about that. Everyone realized they were pretty good last year. They took a massive step up. I, massive might be an understa understatement, actually. Uh, and they add DJ Reader in there with an already progressing Ali McNeil. Like, that run defense is about to be absurd. So that kind of almost made... We talk... Reality is we talk more than three things here, but I like to highlight three things. But number two, a unique type of contender, I'd say because of upside. People might be confused by that. I'm going to tell you what I'm, the hell I'm talking about right now. But you look at, let's take the consensus, like everybody out there, you watching, uh, you know, every most people will say, who are their top teams, like sure thing, really good teams, really good rosters going into week one. I think the consensus, like what most people would say, they would say the Chiefs, they would say, um, you know, maybe the, the Bills. Oh, people are getting a little colder on the Bills. But the, the Ravens, the 49ers, uh, you know, team, you know, maybe the Eagles are up there uh, and the Lions. I do think people have the Lions up there as like a sure thing, good team. We know this, this team is polished going into week one. Like, it's not about like... And I think when people think about those teams, they're, they're, they don't have work to do. They, they, they're they polished, again, set, ready to go. And I'd say that makes – I agree. that I would throw some other teams in there that the consensus doesn't have besides the point. But I would agree with that with the Lions being like day one for this – for 2024, ready, polished, complete roster, good. Like they're a contender. But – they're different than those other teams because those other like when people talk about those teams like the, yeah again they're the polished teams there's not they don't have like something to like work towards really they don't have like progression to worry about and that's the case for most of those teams like of course those teams can get better as the year goes on not saying they can't but 
they're good day one and we know what they're going to be about. The Lions are good day one, but they have so many good young players that are still getting better. They've done a phenomenal job drafting that ta- that young talent and a phenomenal job uh, progressing, you know, developing and helping them progress rapidly. Like early on, they, they kind of came about pretty early on since they put this roster together. Uh, but think about like the... Some of their best players that are young. I mean, you got Jameer Gibbs. I mean, Saint. We'll throw Saint Brown in that category. Obviously, he's in the category of one of their best players. But in terms of young, and still could get better. Um, Hutchinson. We talked about Kirby Joseph, Brian Branch. Uh, they have a lot of young interior. Ali McNeil's a big one. Um, you know, they just drafted Jack Campbell last year. Maybe he could step up uh, offense line. Penny Penny Sewell's known as maybe the best offense line. Maybe top top two, I'd say, offensive tackle. And he's so young, like, it, it, it doesn't really cross people's minds that these guys actually could get better. Like, Gibbs, Sue, like, Laporta was a rookie last year with he did. I almost forgot to mention him. Um, like, these guys are, just because they rapidly got, like, got, you know, progressed doesn't mean they're done. That's my point. So, I think unlike some of the other teams, the other teams can get better as the year goes on. But I actually think the Lions have maybe a bigger ceiling. Like they're, it's rare that we see a team that is like a contender, a polished team day one. Like they're set, ready to go. They're going to be good right away. You know, it's not one of those teams like they're good, but they kind of got to do this, and this guy's got to develop this way. They're already set. But if those guys that realistically can develop, like already star players or borderline star players, that is freaking scary. Like it's scary. Like what I, I've almost wanted to say. I didn't know how to sum that up on the graphic. I almost wanted to say absurd upside or they don't really have a ceiling. Like, like I feel like the ceiling is like, there doesn't exist in like in a good way. So, and once I think about that, when it comes to lines, even myself, I'm like, I, maybe I want to, you know, maybe I think more of them, even though I had them going to the NFC championship game for this year. So far, my final predictions obviously will come uh, a little further in the off season, but um, that's scary thought in, in a good, good way. Scary, scary for other teams in a bad way uh, that are playing the Lions. And then number one thing to watch. What's a big question here? What 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 what's going to go down with Dan Campbell's philosophy of gambling? You know, being 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 that guy that that makes those big time moves like during the games that that end up being clutch. I, I, to me, I think they're too good at, at the, they've progressed so much <clears throat> in where they are going into 2024. I think they're too good for, I'm calling them the Campbell gambles. I, I think, I think they're too good for that. And that does not mean, <clears throat> excuse me, that does not mean don't do it at all. I love a good trick play. I love a, a little, uh, you know, a good, yeah, uh, go for it on fourth down and, you don't have to go buy the book, basically. I I love that. You know, I'm not a guy that's going to go exactly buy the book, what you're supposed to do when you, I hate that stuff. So I'm not saying never do it. Don't be yourself. Not saying that at, at all, actually. I just don't want them to overdo it. But again, I think they're too good for it. What I mean by that is, you know, right when Campbell came in, it's a young team. that It was a future team. Like, we didn't really know what to expect, and, and they – they and we saw what Dan Campbell was about, like with, with uh, gambling and being and being and having huge balls, being ballsy, and and it worked out sometimes. Like, all right, this is kind of their identity. It's gonna make or break the Lions. It's kind of what the talk was, um, you know. And that kind of happened in his early years, obviously. And then, and last year was the same thing. Like, they, everyone knew they were a good team, but they they won quite a few games. They actually won more games than they lost because of Campbell's decisions. Um, you know, and, and it won them some games. And, and even though they were a good team, like sometimes they need it. Like when, when you make those decisions, you make those calls, you're, you're pretty desperate for a momentum shifter or to try to win a game. You need something, you need something to happen to go your way. Um, you know, and, and it, and a lot of times during the regular season went and went kind of went their way. It worked out and it kind of gave them an identity. Um, I think that's, to me, what I'm getting to, it's not really fair for the Lions. Like, that's not their identity. I think they're too good for that. But I, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth here, what I mean by that. But kind of finishing off last year, more they won more games than they lost based on his gambles. But you start going to the end of the year. I remember the, the second time around against the Packers, 
The Packers were kind of figuring those things out, and then the decisions in, in the NFC Championship game against the Niners, uh, you know, when you had a big lead, you know, just take the points. You know, there was a, there was a couple moments, but it, it's just a little bit too a little bit too much. Where I think at this point, I, I don't think this makes or breaks the Lions. Uh, I think it only could break them. There, uh, to me, they're a good enough team to win the fo- the big time games because of the talent that they have. So you don't want to take yourself out of the game with those decisions, much like they did in the NFC title game. So uh, I, I don't think those types, and I guess it's all by situation. You know, it's all by game and. You know, if they're in a situation where they need one, of course, of course, you you try to go for the, the desperate momentum shifter. But to me, Dan Campbell's gotta relax a little bit on them, especially if they're they have their opponent outmatched. You do not want to take yourself out of the game. So that is a big thing that I am looking for. Does you know, is he be a little little more careful with it? Uh, they can't have the NFC Championship game you know happen again. To me, that now is the time. Like. They were still kind of in the development stages in a way before this year, and that's kind of what was scary because they're like a contender last year, but they still have so much upside. Uh, but now's a time where it's a team. Like, this is a legit team, um, you know, so let them go play ball, you know, for the most part. That's kind of my take on that. I don't think it's going to, you know, it's not going to keep up forever, like where, where you have a high – uh, success rate on, on the, the big, the you know, the bold moves with the fake punts, the whatever it may be. I don't really mind the um, like fourth and ones. They go for a lot. I love that. Like I'm not really talking about that. Um, you know, unless it's a situation where you desperately need a field goal, it could be the you know the biggest difference in the game uh, for an opponent trying to come back. It just makes it that an extra possession game. So that's what I'm watching for. Is, is he does he stay the same? I'm not really asking him to change Dan Campbell. It is uh, a ton, but uh, really, I think it's a compliment to the team that that they're too good for that stuff, and I think that they need to realize that. So uh, those are my three like biggest things. What 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 to watch. Um, you know, the biggest questions for this year as well. Uh, I got three players to watch for the Detroit Lions. I'm going to go Aline McNeil as number three. Uh, I was a big fan of McNeil out of NC State. I was very, very high on him, so I'm not surprised at his breakout year last year. But I don't think people are talking about it enough. I, I, I People, like, he's not a huge name yet, and that's fine. He's just getting going, right? But he was better than people think. I think Lions fans know how good he was. Uh, but this is a he's a polished run stuffer that what got better in terms of getting interior pressure, getting after, you know on passing downs. Uh, so for him to play the way he did last year uh, shows the crazy potential, you know, through the roof. So I think he can hit another breakout year, taking another step up, and that could be pretty damn scary, especially with DJ Reader in there next to him, who's a big time run stuffer. Just for that run defense, too. Like, it's going to be such a good run defense. It already was good. Um, and McNeil with his progression and adding Reader, it's it's pretty scary. So that's a player I'm watching for in terms of, like, I already know how good he is and what he can be. I knew that when he was in college. Uh, but it's a guy I'm watching to take another step up and be put on the radar, everyone's radar. Like, okay, this guy is definitely legit like uh, watch out for that with Ali McNeil this year in my opinion uh number two got to put Jamison Williams up here he's got to go now now now's the time he's got to go and they need a receiver to step up badly too I thought they would add a, like a big time one uh you know on the outside possibly to replace Josh Reynolds an upgrade over Josh Reynolds who who was really solid for them he was a little bit of a letdown in the NFC championship game I suppose but um, they need somebody to step up because they need to be that like, like can someone replace? He's a much different player than Reynolds, but can somebody be that but more? Because again, it was you know you felt in the NFC Championship game, it felt like you need to get better in that spot. Need a uh, St. Brown needs some more star power, I suppose, next to him. So Williams, I mean, everybody was high on him at Alabama. Like he's got to be better, it, and he has big time, flashy, game changing plays here and there already. Um, so I'm not going to doubt the guy. But now it's there's a lot on on your back. There's a lot on your shoulders right now. You got to get going. Um, so that's one to watch. Like, does he break out? Is he that guy this year? Because um, it, it'll be it. It'll decide some things for the Lions. Like if he's like Khalif Raymond, you know, is is at times more more uh, productive. And you know, it's good to have that guy. But 
Williams has got to be much better. He's got to be better. So it, 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 his, how he plays this year, I think, again, we'll decide how this receiver unit is as a whole. So a big time player to watch. And number one is a new player on the team was not with the team last year. It's who they traded for Carlton Davis cornerback. They traded for, for, from the bucks. Uh, and he, he is their veteran corner. He's number one for several reasons here. It's not, I mean, the obvious is they needed a corner pretty badly. They needed to get better there. Boom. They add a, a pretty solid veteran experienced veteran that's played well in his career. He's not too old or anything like that. And they get, and they, and they get better. They made a splash trade. That's kind of that. That's a part. That's part of it. But I think the bigger part of it is, and we kind of talked about a little bit ago was they they are more a complete defense now because what they added in their only weak spot. But it is a little bit of a question: Will these guys? Will, you know, will these guys click? And you think about it, that group is so young. Like I think highly of Arnold. If Rake Straw's healthy, he's got to stay healthy. But I. I I, I'm very high on him as well. Like the way the Lions do things, how they rapidly develop guys, like they're going to be good. They're going to be good, but you can't expect full consistency for how young this group is every single week. Um, you can't expect them to be lights, like, you know, lights out every week or all year. Um, you know, so they added a veteran piece here. Like this is the leader of that group. The whole group is new. So there is actually a lot for Carlton Davis here. Um, not just making them better as a player, but leading this group. Like that is actually extremely important. Like he is the guy of that group. And there's a chance that Arnold plays better. I don't, I'm a big Arnold guy. I don't think so. I think Davis would be the best corner, but it could be close. But even if Arnold's better, like there is so much importance from Carlton Davis to lead this group, this young group that is fresh, new, we want this. We're trying to win a Super Bowl now, so we wanted to click right now. So Davis has got to do his job more than just his job here. So that is why he's number one. I could put a lot of guys in this list. Uh, Jameer gives maybe maybe more duties, more more responsibility um, in terms of reps, but maybe as a pass catcher, lining up as a receiver as well. Jack Campbell's got to take a step up. Um, when you draft linebacker in the first round, that was last year. Obviously, like you, you got to start him right. Non-premium position, you got to start. But he, he got less reps than Derek Barnes. Can he take that next step? We got, we got to see that. Um, so you, you can throw um, Pashaw could be another. You can throw a lot of guys uh, in, in this list here. So, um, but exciting players for sure for the Detroit Lions. Uh, games to watch. Uh, you know, I this is a team I really want to list division rivals, but I, I try not to list division rivals for all these teams because it's like, Oh wow. You think the division rivals are the biggest games of the year? Like no shit, you know? So, but it is a, this one stood out more than the other ones because the Packers are getting really good. The Lions struggled with them the last time they played them. Uh, and the bears defense gave them some issues. Um, I thought, uh, and the Vikings actually played them. I wasn't going to mention the Vikings, but the Vikings actually played them close with a disaster at quarterback. So, um, it's a very tough division, so those are some games to watch. Is uh, for obvious games to watch, I suppose. But I listed some other games. Seattle, which we did the Seattle video already, and we listed the Lions as one of theirs. That's in Week Four. I think the Seahawks are better than people think. Uh, first off, they're not as good as the Lions, but I think they're better than they think, and they're going to be tough to game plan for early on. It's like a whole new looks uh, style, I should say. Seahawks team, even though a lot of the players might or some of the players might be similar. It's a different style, tough game plan. Week four is a little bit of a trap game against a team that's a little bit better than you think. Uh, and they lost to them last year as well in an absolute shootout. So can they fix some of the issues they had there? Um, you know, they had, you know, I think with Lockett, they had a struggle at least at the end of the game. Um, you know, so do they fix some things there? So that's going to be a fun game for all those reasons. I believe that's a Monday night game as well. Buffalo in week 15, I, I like that one a lot as well. It's something different. Like we didn't see the Lions play them last year. Um, I, again, the Lions didn't struggle much, but I thought that when, when I when they did, I thought, um, you know, they couple things actually. I cover two for some reason. Bears, the Bears cover two, uh, and the Ravens when they threw that out there, like they really struggled against that. Uh, the Bills, they did change defense coordinators again, but they've for so long they've been a cover two team. They they were trying, they were start, starting to show some different things early last year, and they kind of went back to their bread and butter then. Um, you know, so that 
that's interesting. So how will they match up? And then Josh Allen, like you look at the running quarterback of that, the Lions, you know, when they played Lamar, when they played Justin Fields, they ran pretty well on them. So this will be a tough challenge, actually, in a heavyweight battle for two contenders in Week 15 with some playoff implications, even though they're in different conferences. Uh, a seating, I suppose, on the line. And then speaking of seating, that's where that's where the week big one in Week 17, the NFC Championship rematch. That's another reason it's on there too. I mean, the Lions dominated them in the first half. Should have put the game away, but they kind of you know got dominated in the second half and they blew that game. So how do they respond in Week 17 in a heavyweight matchup of the NFC? And this could decide. I mean, this could decide the one seed, the two seed, whatever. If you win your division or not, even though they're in different divisions. Uh, if you, if you make, I would imagine both make the playoffs, but it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. But again, it, it felt like this is a third video I did. I felt like th- these divisional games, uh, the uh, the Lions divisional games, were a little bigger for some reason than the last two teams. I did. I think there was a little bit more on the line, and just because, yeah, the last time the Lions saw the Packers and, and the uh, the Bears game, some weird. They gave, the Bears probably should have beat them twice, to be honest. So that that was uh, it's a tough division. So uh, those are games to watch as well for the Detroit Lions. Um, but uh, we got some fans takes. If you're an ex subscriber, I'm automatically going to put yours up here, and we're automatically going to discuss it. Okay, I try to get some other people on Twitter. We have a link pinned in the comments for our Twitter involved as well. But uh, yeah, some of the the ex slash Twitter subscribers, Cameron Sullivan. Uh, Appreciate you for playing along here. Will golf golf just said golf. Uh, will golf replicate his play from last season? That it's a, it's a good point as well that we didn't touch on yet. Going into last year, I actually doubted Jared Goff a little bit, so I was wrong on that. Um, I, well, I kind of worried about because the previous year, he, they everyone was running man coverage against the Lions. It was odd, and, and golf dices that up. St. Brown I and mean, St. Brown dices everything up, but. Uh, and when he played zone, which w- which was less than less than it should have been, like he struggled actually. Uh, but last year, so I thought more teams were going to play zone, and I thought maybe he could struggle a little bit more. But um, he played great last year. But I will say again, like for some reason that look at the Matt Eberflus's defense, the Bears. I thought that he gave him some problems, or the Ravens did as well. Um, there's a little some zone defense there, but. Um, yeah, at this point, I see him playing some somewhere around that range, like. It's hard to say he'd play it any better, even though it's somewhat possible. Uh, you know, but it's a real, it's a really good, it's a big question, and it will decide that you know what where uh, the Lions are this year. Really, we know the team's good. We know there's a lot of guys that, like I said, that are still progressing. But um, yeah, like where will golf? Be? I think he's gonna be around what, what where he was. Like he should be at least. Um, Will Dan Campbell keep making risky calls and deciding ends? We talked about it, and it's, he's bringing it up for a good reason. Like, like you, I, I, to me, I, I thought I had a pretty good point that um, that the the team should decide it. That, that basically, he's helping me summarize that a little bit better here. Like, the 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 team should decide the game deciding moments. To to me, not one hundred percent of the time, but I think the team is good enough where where it can. So that's gonna be a big question this year. Uh, how they manage all their new corners. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole new group, so anything could happen there. Um, you know, would it be a complete shocker? If, and Carlton Davis is going to start, but would it would it be a complete shocker if, let's say, Rakestraw just is better is better than Arnold? I'd be a little bit surprised, but I think it's possible. If, like, if Rakestraw is healthy, it's a first-round guy, and he dropped to them in the second round. Um, so, how, and... Do they want to get everyone reps? Because they're they're. What did they do to all the young talent that worked out so so well? Like the reason they are where they are today is they played these guys. They got them reps. Like they got them going right away. So, um, do, it's a good question. Like, do they have a like a rotation uh, there? Who will step up as a receiver too? We touched on as well. Jamison Williams is what uh, people want. What people are expecting. He's going to have to step up. And then will Gibbs snap count increase? You would think so, but they I think they, they have it going pretty I mean I mean the snap count probably should increase, but because he's so good. Um but yeah, we didn't talk about it Gibbs gives a ton in this video. I, I'm just I know we're gonna get we're gonna get some really good play from him, but uh I think it'll increase. I I I like what they got going there. I, I don't want them to get too cute though and start playing a third running back. Like I mean you can he's gonna get reps, but 
Um, you got the, maybe the best one-two punch in football. Ride with it. Give these guys the reps they deserve. Uh, and then we have some of the same stuff uh, from some of the other guys here. Um, improving defensive consistency and improving on last season's campaign. Yeah, from Anthony Kramer. Uh, yeah, well, how consistent will they be on defense? Because there was games where it really was the pass defense. You know, they would give up a ton of points, ton of yards. Like, they just couldn't stop anything. Uh, there was a few games, not a lot, but a few games like that. And it was a bit, actually. Like, Ravens stand out. I think the Bears pretty, did pretty decent on them. The Packers, the Seahawks early on. Um uh, even the Vikings with Nick Mullins, they were scoring some points on them. You know, so they're to the point of being a little inconsistent. Will they be more consistent? So it's just a big question, like we brought up with that secondary. Does does it click right away, and does it make it a complete defense uh, during this year? Um, and a lot of the same points from Ma uh, Gavin Mallard as well. Um, you know, will that's the big question. Will Jamison Williams emerge uh, as receiver two? Who will it be? How about Antoine Green? That could be a sneaky guy to step up, but we'll see. And then some other guys had some point. There was something that uh, uh, Sawi Sauce had a take on Josh Paschall. It's a good point. It's a guy we could have put in our top three players to watch list. Uh, I was super high on Paschall at Kentucky. He was a little bit of a tweener, like which position do we put him at? Um, you know, what is he an edge? Is he a D tackle? Um, he was polished stopping to run, but if he switches positions, like, how is that going to be? We have to work with him getting after the quarterback. So he's a little bit more of a project, but I, I was higher on Paschall than every single person out there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and he hasn't been able to be on the field all 17 games yet, but he has some flashes, uh, you know, so, and he makes some good points. Like, are we going to be able to see more? He's, he's you know, um, they did. They, they did not invest uh, too much on the D line because they trust their development on these and they trust their judgment on these young players. And it's usually I'm, I'm like, don't be afraid to get better. But the Lions know what they got. They know what they're doing here. So that is a guy to watch. Got to stay healthy. Um, and I thought, and somebody else had something. Jack Campbell, Kyle, Kyle Hars, Hartsek, uh, uh Jack Campbell. We talked about a little bit. Will he take that next step? Um, you know, they kind of used them in unique situations last year, like rotation. Uh, obviously, Anzalone is their best linebacker. Uh, you know, Derek Barnes started and played more reps over Campbell. And to me, like, Derek Barnes is, like, sneaky. Like, he's a, maybe a little underrated. He's not the best player in the world. Um, but if you draft Campbell and, and you got Barnes in his way, uh, you draft a linebacker in the first round. Like, to me, he had to start. So something was wrong that he couldn't really start. So that's a big question. I, I would imagine he does this year. I would really hope so. Um, but does he take that big step? I'd like them to use – I was going to say, I like them. I would like them to use him in more blitz situations. I think he has some upside there. But Anzalone, he's a really good blitzer. Uh, you know, they're, I don't, they're not going to all out blitz a ton just in the right moments. Uh, so maybe, maybe that's a trial thing still. Um, in games where you have good leads, perhaps like that, that's not enough of a gamble, right? I think it's okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so a lot of things to watch with the Lions. A lot of a lot of questions that we bring, that people bring up. That's what this video is about. Like big questions. Um, my mine more like for the what to watch tab. It's it's the, there are questions to people. It's things that I'm kind of like believing in though. What to like how I'm answering these questions. Like how they're going to answer these questions. Like really, really what to expect for this year. But um, yeah, a contender. I think the biggest take maybe was uh, like they're a contender that that has crazy upside at the same time, which can make them when it gets to that time, the end of the year, like that we're going like this is the team. This is in the playoffs are usually a whole different game, so I guess we can't fully say at the end of the regular season, but um, like because they're reaching that, they're, they're progressing as the year goes on more than anyone. Like when we were saying, we we're saying, and they're already good, so we're saying maybe this this is the team, you know. So. I uh, can't wait to see what the Lions have for us. And I'm going to call it year two. We knew last year like a breakout was coming, but that's just the start. So kind of year two for this Lions run. Uh, can't wait to see it. But comment on this video with the team you want me to do next. The team with the most comments wins. They will be the next video. We have a playlist of these on the channel. More to come, of course, all 32 teams. Very important to follow us on Twitter. Link pinned in the comments for that. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.